In this lesson, we'll take a look at two examples of determining if an initial value problem in the form of y prime equals f of x comma y with initial condition y of x sub zero equals y sub zero has a solution, and if it has a solution, if it is unique. To do this, we'll apply Picard's theorem on existence and uniqueness shown below, which states if f of x comma y given by y prime is continuous and the partial of f with respect to y exists and is continuous near the point x sub zero comma y sub zero given by the initial condition, then a solution to the initial value problem exists at least for x in some small interval and is unique. Notice how there are two conditions for Picard's theorem. If the first condition is met, meaning if f of x comma y is continuous near x sub zero comma y sub zero, then a solution does exist, we just don't know how many solutions there are or if it is unique. And then if the second condition is met, we know there's only one solution or we have a unique solution. Looking at our first example, is it possible to solve y prime equals x times y for y of zero equals zero? If there is a solution, is it unique? We first need to check to see if f of x comma y, which in this case is equal to x times y, is continuous near the point zero comma zero. When x and y are both zero, notice how the function value is zero, which is a real number. This indicates that f of x comma y is continuous near or around the point zero comma zero, indicating there is a solution to the initial value problem. And now we'll check for uniqueness by determining if the partial of f with respect to y is continuous near the point zero comma zero. The partial of f with respect to y is equal to the derivative of x times y with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us a partial of f with respect to y is equal to x. And this is continuous near or around zero comma zero, which indicates not only do we have a solution, we only have one solution or a unique solution. So once again, a solution exists and is unique by Picard's theorem. In fact, y equals zero is a solution. To better understand what's happening here, let's first take a look at the slope field for y prime equals x times y. The slope field is shown here on the right. There's only one function that passes through the point zero comma zero and fits nicely in the slope field, which again is the unique solution of y equals zero. Let's also take the time to actually solve the initial value problem. We begin by writing y prime equals x times y as dy dx equals x times y using separation of variables or writing the differential equation in differential form. We have one divided by y dy equals x times dx, integrating both sides of the equation. We have natural log absolute value of y equals x squared divided by two plus c sub one. Writing the log equation as an exponential equation, we have e raised to the power of one half x squared plus c sub one equals the absolute value of y. Notice on the left side, we have an exponential function, which is always greater than zero, and therefore we can drop the absolute value. On the left, because the exponent is a sum, we can write this as e raised to the power of one half x squared times e to the power of c sub one. e to the power of c sub one is just some constant, which will add equal c, and we can write the general solution as y equals c times e to the power of one half x squared. Using the initial condition y of zero equals zero, we can determine the value of c by subbing in zero for y and zero for x, and notice we get c equals zero, and when c equals zero, we get the unique solution of y equals zero. And now let's look at our second example. Is it possible to solve y prime equals x divided by the quantity x squared minus one for y of one equals zero, if there is a solution, is it unique? So again, the first step is to determine if f of x comma y is continuous near or around the point one comma zero. In this case, it's not possible to solve the equation because f of x comma y is equal to x divided by the quantity x squared minus one, which is not defined at the point one comma zero because when x equals one, we have one minus one or zero in the denominator and we know division by zero is undefined. So we go ahead and stop here. Because we know there's no solution, there's no reason to check the partial of f with respect to y. To verify there is no solution, let's go ahead and try to solve the initial value problem. Because we have y prime equals a function of x, we can try to solve the differential equation by integrating both sides of the equation with respect to x. On the right, notice how we need to perform u substitution, where u is equal to x squared minus one, differential u is equal to two x dx, Solving for x dx, we divide both sides by two, which gives us one half to u equals x dx. 
On the left side of the equation, we just get y of x. We'll include the constant on the right. Writing the right side in terms of u, we replace x dx with 1 half du, leaving us with 1 divided by u as the integrand function. Integrating on the right, we have 1 half natural log absolute value of u plus c, where u is equal to the quantity x squared minus 1. From here, notice natural log absolute value of x squared minus 1 is undefined at x equals 1 because natural log 0 is undefined, which does verify there is no solution to the initial value problem. I hope you found this helpful.